Okay, so now we're going to continue on and we're going to start talking about frames and other things to consider as we move forward. So frames are important to us. As we mentioned earlier, you know, there are a lot of things that we're looking at when we're considering selecting an electric strike for an opening. We're going to access a control that's something mechanical to something electrified. The frames are important to us. Common frames we're going to run into, hollow metal frames, aluminum, wood, and timely or western style frames. Each one of them has their pluses and their minuses, their difficulty to work with. Um, over the years, I, I've kind of found the one that probably scares me the most is, is oftentimes the aluminum frame, because if you mess it up, it's, it's very hard to work with, it's very hard to clean up, and also wood. But I grew up working with wood, so it doesn't intimidate me too much, but I have to consider my technicians and their skill set. What type of skill set does a technician have when we're going out there and working with something? And I'm going to kind of talk to you about some of the tips that I would share with my technicians before I send them out there is, you know, what, you know, what do you have to kind of think about when you're going to start doing working with, you know, wood in particular? Aluminum, I'll be honest with you, aluminum, we would call and we talk to our locksmith um, and let the locksmith oftentimes handle the aluminum because the atoms right in the aluminum is so particular, if you mess it up, it's just going to be ugly. So let's kind of take a look at some of these. You know, when we take a look at a metal frame, the metal frame, oftentimes we get that existing um, pocket already, standard four and seven eighths inch pocket that we're gonna be working with. And we're gonna take that frame and we're gonna, um, we're gonna, no, we're gonna have to cut it open. We're gonna have to take a look at what are the options because we have options for no cut strikes as well. We'll talk a little bit about those later on, but for the majority of time when we're working with the frames, we're gonna be doing some type of minor cutting that needs to be done. So identifying the types of frames are important. What is behind the frame it is just as critical. Is it cement? Is it some kind of mortar? Do we have drywall sitting back behind there? Do we have wood sitting behind there used for anchoring? And then you get over here and you get over to aluminum, that storefront aluminum. Almost 50% of all access control openings that we're doing today are with storefront aluminum. You know, what do I have to look at when I'm playing with the storefront aluminum? I'm doing my site survey and that glass chunk right there, that glass chunk right there sitting inside my frame, it's intruding into the, into the pocket of this storefront aluminum. I have to pay attention to it because if I don't, I'm gonna have an issue, which I'll show you a little bit later on here. But learning and understanding what you're working with is important. We've seen a lot of ugly stuff that happens over time, accidents that can happen, misuse of tools, using the wrong tools. Those are common things that we're looking at. Here I've got an electric strike that, you know, it looks like there was a previous electric strike inside the pocket. Someone came in and did a retrofit. You know, the old strike went bad, something had happened to it. And there's just sometimes nothing you can do about it unless you really got, you want to take some time and you want to bring out your welding kit. You want to put a new piece of metal in there, clean it up a little bit, some Bondo, um, redo some painting. But a lot of times, once it's ugly, it's going to be ugly for a long time. And if you're not careful with glass, you will break it. You will break it. Just nicking. You come up here and you just nick that corner right there. You just nick it with one of your power tools or something like that. And you're going to get something like this that's going to happen. So we want to learn, we want to be careful when we're working with this. I often will, will tell people that if you get a chance, you get an opportunity, go to a reclamation yard and buy some of this material, take it back, put it in your, uh, uh, put it in your workshop or someplace, put it in a, in a vise and try practicing installa installing into that product, whatever you have, whether it's going to be metal, aluminum or wood, have your new technicians who are learning how to do it practice before they go out and mess up you know out in the customers you know, on the customers frame because they're gonna have a problem with you wood creates its own set of problems you know so we have to be aware of it I grew up um, we grew up in the Midwest we're um, we we're required to take a woodworking class as part of a shop class that we had to take in high school for one semester so we got to learn our stand wood and growing up on a farm I also got a chance to work with wood quite a bit as well but then you come across something that that is more what we call timely or Western style frames um, here again it's learning to work with the different um, types of, of metals that you have this is oftentimes a real light gauge metal. Oftentimes it's going to be a 16, maybe even an 18 gauge metal. Um, you will find some 14s, but with most of the aluminum, uh, the, the lighter gauge aluminum, like timely frames, you can actually use a simple scoring, uh, a scoring tool uh, in conjunction with a pair of uh, scissors, um, a tin of uh, scissors, which we can use to do some cutting with it. Because if we mess up, you know, some of the stuff, there's just not much we can do with it. This was an application here 
where they, they had an issue. My best guess is this is our HES 7000 series strike designed for preload pressure. Um, if they had a preload pressure, they cut in the strike because they had the pressure there. Wood, once you get a bad wood door or wood frame, it's almost impossible to fix it or correct it. They try to use um, a preload electric strike with it, but you can see it's really not designed for this kind of an option. Later on, I want to talk about the Adams Wright 7400 series, um, which is also designed for preload, but would have been a much better application for this fit. Because we're going to see a lot of ugly stuff that happens over time. Um, learning to work with the different products and the metals, it takes time, it takes experience. Um, I always kind of looked at part of my responsibility is when I'm working with someone younger, share our information, share with them the things that we know. So when they go out there, we want them to be successful. We want overall for our organization to be successful. Working with wood, I had a, cus I had a customer who had a couple of wood frames we had to work with. And I was able to kind of get some pictures um, from other um, other applications that I'd seen over time. And I would share them with my technician. So like here I've got an application where they added in an electric strike. And oftentimes we, we put so much pressure on our technicians to push and go faster, 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 get the job done. And, and by doing that, they're oftentimes going to use their power tools and they're going to power everything in. But if they don't know and understand what they're you know, what they're working with, they're going to create some different problems. So here, you can see that they use their power tools and put their screws in, and they end up cracking the wood, um, old dry wood. Learning how to work with it, having the proper tools. Um, I'm a big fan of the oscillating tool up here. It doesn't matter who you know who's you get, but the oscillating tool is great for wood. Um, you can use it for wood all day long. I would not recommend it for. Uh, metals, but for wood, it does a beautiful job. The blades, um, you can get in different sizes. We can get in here and do nice, simple, easy cuts in here. The other thing that is one of the biggest mistakes that we made, um, that we make overall when, when working with wood, is we want to use a standard 4 and 7 8 inch faceplate. Anytime you're working with wood, you always want to go to a 7 or a 9 inch faceplate. It adds additional holding strength over the, the, the length of the wood piece in there. Wood is always going to potentially have its issues with weakness, but by going to the longer faceplate, we stretch out the strength of it. We give it a lot better holding capability um, over time. And sometimes you even have to customize. Here, we have to customize um, and add an extra block because of um, the scenario that we're working with. They needed to actually extend off, create an extender to extend the strike off of the frame a little bit, so they created a low wood block put it underneath there, secured it on, painted it, made it look decent. Um, I can accept that because sometimes we have to be creative. There is never a clean, you're very rare, rarely are you going to come across a 100% clean application all the time. You have to do some types of minor adjustments here and there, and sometimes you have to be really creative, and I'm going to show you a couple more later on. Here I've got another scenario here. Here when, I, when I'm doing my site survey, I'm trying to understand what am I working with. I want to look at you know, access controlling this opening. A couple of different things we're going to potentially look at. One, can I electrify the bar? Can I get an electrification kit from the manufacturer for the bar? Things we want to consider. Um, I've got a center removable mullion. Remember, my site survey is going to be critical for me here. A center removable mullion, what are my options? You know, what are there any code considerations that I have to pay attention to? You know, the codes are important to us here again. You know, I need to make sure I maintain free egress out of the building. If this is part of a fire rate assembly or something like that, I need to consider that as well. In this situation here, I'm going to be looking at that existing hardware. What type of hardware do I have on the opening? What type of headspace do I have in here? That's important to me as well. I've got a, a Pullman latch. What is the length of the latch? Half inch versus three quarters of an inch. Important when we're looking at electric strikes that we're going to potentially put on the opening. Okay, we're also going to consider, you know, operation of what's happening right here. Can I put the electric strike in there? I talked about the, the gap between the head, so the head of the bar, and the actual mullion. Do I have enough space to slide an electric strike in there? A half inch electric strike versus a three quarters inch thick electric strike. Does it have to be fire rated? Yes or no? A lot of questions we have to ask when we're doing our site survey. A lot of measurements we may have to take when we're doing that site survey. Here's another situation. I found this one. Um, this was at a, um, a university hospital, so it's a, a college campus. 
um, and they had their own hospital. And here there was a brand new hospital. They were building it. Um, I came in after the project was complete, fully operational. And looking at this door, the customer said, um, look what they did to my frame. So what they did here is they had a door, a solid wood core door with a, a mechanical cylindrical lock set on it. And they said, hey, I can add in an electric strike on here. What they did not do, and, and this happened on, I think it's 36 or 37 doors, is they didn't take a look at the frame. They didn't pay attention to the frame that they had to work with. And they didn't look at the depth of the frame. So they brought in an electric strike. They, they put it in and it didn't quite fit, you know, but by screwing down the screws, they were able to get it kind of in the pocket, but you can see it, it, it had a nice bow to it. So it had a nice bow. And, and what happened is when the latch came into the pocket, it threw off how it engaged here. So they had to literally take and, and just gouge out the front lip right there. And you can see another image of it right here. They literally had to gouge it out. And, and to me, this is how important is a site survey? You know, this should have never been an electric strike in the frame. It should have been an electrified lever set. They could have cored through the door and put in an electrified lever set. Yes, it would have been a little bit more expensive, but it would have been a much better application over time.